All right, welcome everyone to today's Glamcon seminar. Today I'm thrilled to host and uh, moderate a special guest uh, who doesn't need any introduction. She's well known to everyone, Dr. Dia Vagusback, who is. Thank you. Uh, I am enjoying being here today in a slightly different role. Uh, so this was my disclosures and my here's the outline. So um, what I wanted to do is kind of do an overview today of Anca vasculitis. We'll go through clinical presentations um, and related, you know, to the nephrologist, nephropathologist, talk about diagnosis, pathophysiology, and um, treatment, and go over some of the guidelines, and then take some time to go over what the future looks like and ongoing uh, clinical trials, as we've had such an explosion of different agents being used in glomerular diseases. Um, and then I have two cases at the end that I wanted to share to stimulate, really stimulate discussion, uh, two challenging cases and um, see, get input from the audience too on what you would do with these cases. So as we know, the um, vasculitides can affect anywhere from large to medium uh, size to small arteries, and the Inca vasculitis and affects the small vessels. There are three different clinical um, diagnoses of uh, Inca positive vasculitis, the microscopic polyangiitis, granulomatosis with polyangiitis, and eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangiitis. Today, we're going to talk about the clinical um, diagnosis of microscopic polyangiitis and granulomatosis with polyangiitis. So what is it? So we know it's a life-threatening disease, um, but now is treatable. And it's rare, uh, but as uh, a kidney community here, we know that kidney involvement um, definitely has the patients with worse prognosis and often um, either present sicker or present later on in their disease course and progression of kidney disease in Inca associated vasculitis uh, tends to be not only burdensome um, for the patient and the healthcare system, but can um, increase their mortality. So prompt diagnosis and um, immunosuppression can improve outcomes But we often have delays in diagnosis. So almost 60% of patients self-report that their diagnosis um, was delayed, um, often by six months or more. And so that's one of the things we'll talk about when we talk about symptoms and um, why I think it's so important as we, not only as nephrologists, but as we're teaching um, others that we keen um, hone in on some of these uh, different symptoms that patients may have before they may show up with either severe kidney involvement um, to our offices. So there are several common organ manifestations and they can present with very differing frequencies. Um, and as it is a small vessel vasculitis, uh, all, all organ systems are have the potential for being affected by the disease and by the disease process at different times. So before we talk about how it can affect different organ systems and then focus a bit more on the kidney itself, I wanted to bring up the Birmingham Vasculitis Activity Score. Um, so the BVAS, as it's called, was is a score that was developed back in the 90s, and it's been um, validated and accepted for use in act disease activity, um, so looking for active or persistent disease in patients with vasculitis. Um, it is based on expert consensus, but it is something that's been used in clinical trials to assess whether a patient has active disease and then could be um, considered for the therapies or whether they've gone into remission of their disease. So I think it's important to, to bring up. The BVAS is actually 56 items across nine organ systems, um, and one is general and the others are tissue specific. And again, it shows new worsening or persistent disease. Um, it is not meant to show uh, or be scored for disease that is, um, or outcomes that are from scarring. 
Um, so it has to be active disease. And if you have a positive score, then it is active disease and a score of zero would mean that you're in remission. And all of this is over the previous four weeks of symptoms that the patient may have. So just to continue a little bit more, the, you know, it has helped to standardize assessment for clinical trials in vasculitis. And uh, as we know, um, standardization and, and defining what's active disease is important, and specifically in a vasculitis, which is affecting uh, multiple organ systems. And it does define between remission and active disease. And this can be important, um, as we'll see when we talk about ongoing trials and therapy, whether we're dis uh, disease modifying or something that is more supportive uh, treatment. And it can help us with evaluating response to treatment. Um, this in the purple box here is just a checklist of the different categories to kind of show you the different types of things they're looking for. And when something is talked as severe disease, so someone with proteinuria, hematuria, or an elevated serum creatinine is automatically in the severe disease category. And that's why we as nephrologist and then potentially the, our nephropathology colleagues who um, receive some biopsy specimens will see that this is um, easier to diagnose than say someone who presents with um, ENT disease or um, something affecting the nervous system. So that being said, the BVAS is used primarily in the research setting, but again, I wanted to present it to show you um, how, when we talk some about trials, these patients were evaluated um, for enrollment and then how they were assessed for relapse. So uh, the clinical presentation of an vasculitis is often indolent upper respiratory tract symptoms. Those, as we said, can be very challenging um, than those we see in an ICU setting with a rapidly progressive pulmonary renal syndrome. syndrome. The ENT limited disease may be ANCA negative, um, so can delay diagnosis. And there are radiologic findings that have low specificity. So imaging isn't necessarily going to show you something to um, clue you in on uh, vasculitis. I, we talk as, um, you know, as we have such great relationships and work uh, together with our uh, pathology colleagues, um, biopsies in this disease that are not um, the kidney biopsies often have really low diagnostic yield. Um, and you may only see vasculitis in 33% of biopsies of other organ tissue systems. So what is the difference and what are key points we need to kind of remember when we're looking um, and distinguishing between granulomatosis with polyangiitis and microscopic polyangiitis? So the GPA typically features granulomatous in inflammation of the upper respiratory tract system, and the MPA commonly presents with renal-limited vasculitis and pulmonary hemorrhage. Both are going to involve the ANCA targeting...